the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth, and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed, since the Almighty had set his bow in the clouds after the great flood, as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century, since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees. In the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the Exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel. In the 194th Olympiad. In the year 752, since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, the eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. So welcome to uh, the parish of our Lady of the Rosary, St Mary Magdalene Church, for our celebration of Christmas, the Nativity of the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll start by blessing uh, the Nativity scene, the crib. Uh, welcome everybody in the church. Uh, welcome everyone who's joining us on Facebook uh, via the iPhone just in front of me. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, we pause to bless this Christmas manger scene. The practice of erecting such mangers was begun by St. Francis of Assisi as a means to set forth the message of Christmas. When we look upon these figures, the Christmas gospel comes alive and we are moved to rejoice in the mystery of the Incarnation of the Son of God. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Saviour was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger, May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up in our thoughts to him who is God with us and Saviour of all and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Well, it's a joy that we're able to gather together this evening to celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. And uh, before we can do that, before we can celebrate, we must pause, my dear brothers and sisters, to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty, God, uh, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you are Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendour of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Today a Saviour has been born to us, he is Christ the Lord. Today a Saviour has been born to us, he is Christ the Lord. O sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. O sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today a Saviour has been born to us, he is Christ the Lord. Proclaim his help day by day, tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the people. Today a Saviour has been born to us. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to rule the earth. Today is the Saviour of the Lord to us, and his Christ With justice he will rule the world, he will judge the peoples with his truth. Today, the Saviour has been born to us. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul's Titus. God's grace has been revealed and has made 
made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God. And all our worldly ambitions, we must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world. While we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of the great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, he sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify people so they could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. This is the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and travelled up to Judea, to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favour. The Gospel of the Lord. With our booking system this evening, the requirements of track and trace, uh, we've tried to give you the authentic Christmas experience of Emperor Caesar Augustus, who takes a census of the people. Uh, some people, uh, we've even said, you have to go next door into the stable, into the hall, to make sure that we're not overcrowded. This year, I, think, I don't think I'm being overly political if I say that I think many of us have been disappointed 
with the leadership experienced in the country in recent times, or even the world perhaps. The reading from the prophet Isaiah lists the qualities of effective leadership, especially in listening to and giving good counsel, to be a father to the people, and to seek peace with justice and righteousness. I don't want to be too overly critical of our leaders because I recognise that those attributes are sometimes lacking in myself. Isaiah is speaking firstly of good King Hezekiah, who unlike his father before him was a pious man and Hezekiah put his trust in the Lord. And in doing so, he would reconquer the region that was lost by invasion. It's a promise to the people that the nation will recover its grounds for hope. Many may feel that in 2020, we have been a people who have walked in darkness, especially those who have been shielding, furloughed, or made redundant. The prophecy of Isaiah, of course, has future dimensions and will apply most especially to the Messiah, but also now to our own time. That times of struggle will come and they will pass, and that we should never lose our hope, always placing our trust in God. And Christmas remains a sign to us that God is present amongst his people. The invisible God becomes visible. This is true humility. The creator becomes a creature to redeem us, but also to raise us up to sharing in the divine life. This is so beautifully expressed in the adding of a drop of water into the wine of the offertory. May by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. This Christ child will have all the wisdom of Solomon, the prowess of David, the administrative skills of Moses, and like Moses, he'll be a liberator, a guide, and a father to his people. Most certainly, Jesus Christ is wonderful in his birth, a counsellor in his preaching. He is mighty in his passion. He is everlasting in his resurrection and peaceful in the eternal life offered to God's faithful people. As priests, we must never preach ourselves. We should never preach or offer you our own wacky ideas. In doing so, we will promise much, but deliver little. Instead, we should always preach with the mind of the church, because the mind of the church is the mind of Jesus Christ himself. And so I bring you news of great joy. Today a saviour has been born for us. It is Christ the Lord. In preaching the Catholic and Apostolic faith, the people of God walking in darkness are offered the light of Christ, the hope of eternal life. And uh, as it might make it to number one, all I want for Christmas is you, my God. God inwardly moves us to seek holiness. And in every situation we find ourselves, we ask, is this good? Is this true? Is this worthy of the name Christian? For every decision we make is a choice for or against the person of Jesus Christ. As the angels sing, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. That is those who actively seek to do the will of God in their life. Jesus is reborn in our hearts today to expand them, to make more room for him. And in doing so, we can make more room for those who are in need. Yes, their physical needs, but above all, the need for them to hear the good news of salvation. The Saviour has come to free us from our sins, and in doing so, he opens for us the way to heaven. On this holy night, I wish you all a very happy and holy Christmas.
let us stand. As we uh, pray the Greek tonight, when we get to the words and became man, we'll just pause for a moment. If we're able, we'll kneel. If not, just take a moment to think in your hearts the incarnation and the great mystery and wonder. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us stand and pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the oblation of today's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you don't have a kneeler, please feel free to sit. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation encountered among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty 
from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Word became flesh, and we have seen his glory.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the Feast of the Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honourable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of Holy Mass. We'll distribute communion shortly after the final blessing. Uh, if you've got one of those green envelopes, that's for the Christmas collection. And uh, Father Rajesh and I thank you immensely for your generosity uh, this evening. There's also a second box uh, by St Anthony's statue on the way out for the crib collection, which helps the Catholic Children's Society's emergency appeal. So your green envelopes can go in the weekly offertory box as you go out, and the little box for your crib offerings to assist the Catholic Children's Society emergency appeal. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favour, and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. If you're coming forward for Holy Communion, please be seated for a moment. Uh, the stewards uh, are going to come forward and take their places in just a moment. So at the moment, just the stewards are moving. Uh, please wait until the steward directs you before coming forward, coming down the middle and round back the one-way system. Please pay attention to the red lines. Please don't encroach on somebody else's space unless you know it's safe to do, to do so. Uh, we're asking you please to receive Holy Communion in the hand only this evening. And... Uh, uh, the stewards will just direct you. I'm just going to put my face covering on and re-sanitise my hands.
the same. 